Get everyone, welcome to the Brownlow Breakdown. This is for round three. Don't worry if you can't find round two and round one. I was a bit undecided on whether on making it its own sort of video, but I'm going to from now on because doing the full scale 20 to 25 minute reviews is kind of impossible at the moment. And this is a Brownlow algorithm that I'm really proud of. So I'm going to go through all the games, all the votes really, really quick, really, really snappy. As you can see, as the timestamp, not going to take up too much of your time. And then, of course, as the week goes on, more videos will be coming out. Things from the weekend that I think need to be talked about as a whole, of course, Supercoach video coming as well. So if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so already. And we hit 500, which is genuinely mind-boggling. And I've had quite a while now to dissect just how much I want to say thank you. I still don't think I've done it correctly yet which is a problem, but it's a massive thanks. The fact that you guys, you know, want to stick around and, and watch uh, what I'm doing is is genuinely astounding. So I apologize if this isn't the most profound thank you of all time, but it's it's one of the most heartfelt. So I appreciate it. And if you haven't done so already, come and join the best footy community on YouTube and let's get stuck into the votes. Feels like so long ago that the doggies got the job done and, and Tim English probably did benefit from a hickey going down, but he was the best player on the ground according to the numbers. Josh Dunkley, his inside mid work was awesome. Lockie Hunter, a little bit maligned at the moment. Lockie Hunter, he was fantastic. And of course, Bailey Smith there gets the half a vote. The reason why there is a half a vote, I might explain that now, is because there are a lot of variables, especially when it comes to good defenders or forwards performances that end up might be getting one or two votes in my kind of algorithm and because the Brandlow is so heavily centered on midfielders having that half a vote offsets maybe like a, a Petrarca or an Oliver or a Neil or someone like that might end up with a half a vote in my algorithm might end up with a vote or two with the umpires because they are midfield biased it helps sort of even out the leaderboard at the end of the year. So don't freak out because of that. And there are going to be some weird places on the leaderboard toward the end of the year. Just go with it. Half a vote is the guy that might end up getting votes, might or might not, but it evens up as the year goes on. So Bailey Smith there and a really good win by the dogs. Two, three vote performances in a row for Clayton Oliver. And the difference between him and Angus Brayshaw was actually just 1.5 points. So really, really tight there. 20 marks from Angus Brayshaw. Can you believe that as well? Max Gorn gets on the board in 2022, and I think we all learned that Luke Jackson is a good, honest star player, but he's not that superstar level yet, and Dylan Shear was the best of the Bombers for me, and for the numbers. I don't automatically give medalists winners the three votes, that's not how I like to form my algorithm, but you do need to understand that the three votes on that night is who the umpires are going to go with, I don't think they want to be controversial and change it up, but Jordan Dawson did actually get the most points in the algorithm on the ground anyway. I'd argue if Travis Boat kicks that goal because they were so close, that would have been flipped. So that is what it is. Ben Keyes has started the year like a house on fire. I'm a big fan of Harry Schomburg, but that doesn't affect it. I thought he was really good as well, and the numbers agree. I feel like Lee Montagna is the only footy expert or analyst that he's talking about Tom Green's start to the season, but he was genuinely fantastic. And he actually pulled away from Stephen Canelio and Tim Taranto in the points. Now, if Canelio does convert his three points to goals, I think they would have been within half or a point of each other. Would have made it really, really interesting. But two goals, two, 30 disposals. Tom Green was fantastic. Canelio looks like he's back to some really, really scintillating form. And Tim Taranto, and it's kind of why I'm worried about teams chasing him really, really hard in the offseason. He just turns the ball over too much. Like, Timmy, I know you're a best of first winner and you're, and you're a really, really good footballer, but just take better care of the footy, son. And what a debut it was for Braden Proust. Could argue the Pies are a bit stiff to not have anyone in the votes here considering how well they started the game. Maybe a guy like Jamie Elliott you might see is pretty unlucky. But Jeremy Cameron turned the game on his head and he flew away from the votes. Patrick Dangerfield... Is one of those ones that I don't think he'll get the two when it comes to the umpires. Again, I don't control what the numbers do. I can only follow the rules as the algorithm tells me. Um, an algorithm explanation video might be a little bit difficult. I might look at it in the future. But Danger might be one of those ones that a lot of people disagree with. Tommy Stewart was fantastic and Cam Guthrie ends up the votes there. Now, if I was giving it out personally, I think I might find room for Jamie Elliott to get a vote. And I think Pat Lipinski was really good as well, but, you know, sometimes you just got to look at just how good the contest is, and how good is footy at the moment, but for Geelong and Collingwood, what a fantastic game, and even though all four cats got in the votes there, the Pies lost no fans, lost no respect, and were fantastic on the night.
And welcome back to the fold, Jared Lyons. It's really pleasing to see him actually flourish in the midfielder's role. This forward mix balance is just not okay. Zach Bailey was fantastic. Lincoln McCarthy, I thought he was awesome. But let's be honest, if Charlie Cameron converts half of those points to goals, he would have ended up with 5-3 and would have absolutely blitzed everyone with the three votes. And again, 2-6, it's one of those awkward score lines, which is why having that half vote, whether Charlie does end up knocking off a Lincoln McCarthy or he doesn't, it all kind of balances out in the end. I think you could interchange McCarthy or Cameron. McCarthy took his opportunities and goals are worth quite a bit in the algorithm system, which is why McCarthy gets the vote there. Well done, Jared Lyons. Zach Bailey had a little bit of a slow start. He's back to good form, but this was just a dominating performance by Brisbane. There seems to be three guarantees in life in 2022. Death, taxes, and Paddy Cripps getting the three votes. Now, Tom Mitchell went with him in the first quarter, and even as a, you know, a Hawthorne supporter, even I went, really? That doesn't look like it was going to work at all. And when Cripps kicked a goal and probably had the three Brownlow votes sewn up already, it was pretty clear that it wasn't going to work. Now, Cripper did have a quiet third quarter, and the back end of his last quarter was okay, but that big bruising style is going to get a lot of attention, and the contested ball also helps with the algorithm as well. George Hewitt, now everyone wants to talk about all these good acquisitions over the course of the offseason. I would argue he's been the best acquisition so far. He's been fantastic, and the Blues are onto a winner there. Dylan Moore and Chankwath Giath were within half a point of each other. And you could swap either of them around. CJ won the Hawthorne fans MVP. Uh, that was announced earlier this morning. So CJ could easily get a vote. Jack Silvani could get a vote. Uh, Charlie Kerno was uh, really, really quiet in the second half. But he looked like he was going to grab votes at the end as well. So I'm looking forward to figuring out who gets the one vote in this game. But according to the numbers, it's Dylan Moore, who is probably an All-Australian half forward at this point, And no one wants to talk about it. Champion Data rated him an elite general forward. And I hope people are now figuring out why that wasn't as bad a call as it was treated by fans in the offseason. I really, really hope that the numbers are right here because Brad Crouch for four quarters was the best player on the ground in the St. Kilda Richmond game. Max King for three quarters was borderline invisible, came to life, ripped the game apart. Big forwards do that. It's fantastic. We love to see it and absolutely deserves the two votes, but I think we need to reward the four-quarter effort that Brad Crouch gave. There were some times during that first half where Richmond could have pulled it away. He had key clearances and even a couple of key tackles, the one on Shea Bolton in the second quarter comes to mind. Jack Steele, I thought, was pretty good throughout. Wouldn't surprise me to see Jack Sinclair get the official Brownlow vote for one there, but how good of a start has that been? And I was pretty wrong about St. Kilda's midfield in the preseason. With the inclusions of a fit Gresham and now Sinclair getting center bounce attendances, they've got some X factor and a point of difference that they were severely lacking at about February. And to finish off, again, I'm really happy with Lockie Schultz getting the three votes in the algorithm because that also did match uh, what happened with the Glenn Denning Allen medal, so that was really pleasing. Blake Akers, his performance kind of went under the radar, I feel, and he's not the kind of guy that he's going to, you know, end up with 20 votes at the end of the year, but this was a great performance, and I'm really glad that he is rewarded with the numbers. And, of course, uh, Shannon Hearn and Jeremy McGovern, the ball was down there that often. They're probably going to end up with votes anyway. Hearn turning back the clock and McGovern... He's been good all year, and again, probably not being talked about. There are so many other things to talk about when it comes to West Coast that is not their decimated lineup, but there it is. Those are all nine games. Let's get to the leaderboard, and Patrick Cripps is heading up that spot beautifully. The three players there in Brayshaw, Cripp, uh, sorry, Brayshaw, Oliver, and uh, Mitch Lewis there on the six. Mitch Lewis really quiet, but was best on ground. For the first two games, Tom Green there on five and a half and Neil Keys and Dangerfield on five. So that's it, guys. There is the breakdown. What do you agree with? What do you disagree with? Who do you think is leading the Brownlow after round three? I hope you enjoyed your weekend, you fantastic people. Thank you again for the 500 subscribers. Here is to the next 500. Hopefully we hit 1,000 by the time grand final day comes. I hope you have an amazing week. Stick around for all the content coming as well. I'm Daz. This is Daz Talks Footy. I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.